Pro 10, Triple Phase, Maestro, VPP, huh? Truth be told, underneath all of these branded names, there are only four main suspension types. That is single pivot, linkage driven single pivot, twin link and horse link. Watch this whole video and you should be able to identify any type of suspension link just by looking at it. Suspension designs are complex. You can have various numbers of links and various lengths of links. Even the shock position can drastically alter the characteristics of that rear suspension, which means that two bikes, even with the same layout, can have very different characteristics. Now, I'm going to go into this in more detail, obviously, but before we start, let's have a little jargon busting session so that we're all on the same page when it comes to terminology. A pivot is a moving part, usually made up of a bushing or a bearing. A main pivot is the central point where the rear axle or the rear wheel will move around. It is often referred to as the instant center. A bar is a rigid linkage or a part that connects two pivots. A rocker link is a moving bar or linkage that connects the shock to the rear seat stay. It's called this because it typically pivots in the center and therefore rocks as the suspension moves. Bottom out is where your suspension reaches all of its travel and has no more room for movement. The seat stay is the bar that connects the rear wheel up towards the seat tube. The chain stay is the bottom bar that connects the rear wheel along the chain line. The swing arm refers to the rear part of the bike. It's usually a solid piece. Anti-squat refers to the amount of effect that pedaling has on your bike suspension. So think of this as your bike squatting or bobbing under pedaling load. Anti-rise is the amount of effect that braking has on your suspension. So think of your bike rising as it firms up under the pressures of braking. You will sometimes hear the terms progressive or linear or leverage ratios when referring to suspension. Now, leverage ratio describes how much leverage the rear wheel has on a shock because all of your travel is in the rear wheel movement, not the shock itself. So you could have 150 mils of rear wheel movement, but your shock may only move by 55 millimeters. So therefore we're talking about the amount of leverage it takes to move that shock. So if your bike has a linear leverage ratio, it just means that the movement on the rear wheel and the movement on the shock are consistent throughout the stroke. So let's imagine that your shock moves one millimeter for every two millimeters of rear wheel movement. That ratio will stay the same throughout the stroke in that that movement will always be consistent throughout the stroke. If you had a progressive leverage ratio, then that means that there will be less movement in the shock for every one or two millimeters of travel in the rear, which in reality means that it would become progressively harder at the end of the stroke. Whew, that's the jargon busting out of the way. Time to get into the real meat of the matter. Probably the simplest suspension design is the single pivot. As the name suggests, there is only one main pivot point that the rear axle rotates around. This design will have one single swing arm and one single pivot, and the shock will be attached directly to the swing arm. So because there's only one fixed main single pivot that the rear wheel rotates around, the feel will be consistent throughout the travel. And that's to say that the leverage ratio is also consistent throughout the travel. So for example, if your rear wheel moves by 20 mils and that actuates the shock by one mil, it will do that throughout the whole of the travel and that will give it a very consistent feel, but it also means that they are often accused of being easy to bottom out. 
Of course, you could pair a single pivot with a progressive coil or an air shock with a lot of spacers. And as the bike moves through its travel, the air will start to compress and ramp up and become firmer through the bike's travel, thus giving you a little bit of bottom out resistance. If there's a solid chainstay between the rear axle and the main pivot point, but there are other links involved, then this is a linkage-driven single pivot. Much like the single pivot, the rear axle still rotates around that main pivot point. But by adding a link or more, this will change how much leverage there is on the shock at different points in the suspension's travel. This means that the bike could require less force to activate the first part of the travel, but may require a lot of force to activate the suspension towards the end of the travel, and therefore it's not linear like a true single pivot. So for example, the Canyon Lux is a linkage-driven single pivot. You can tell because you can see that the rear axle is attached to that main pivot point. However, you can see that there's also a hanging rocker link. Now this gives Canyon the ability to tune the suspension. And in this case, they made it more small bump compliant by requiring less force to move the suspension in its initial stroke. The interesting thing about the Canyon Lux design is that it also uses flex stays. Now, flex stays means that there is flex or movement in, say, the seat stays or the chain stays. Now, Canyon Lux and Orbea always use the flex in the seat stays. And this means that once the bike has moved through all of its travel, there's still a little bit of movement to be had, which gives you a good amount of bottom out protection. Um, but this means that they don't have to use an added pivot point, which means no hardware no extra metal, and that makes it a lot lighter than something with an added pivot at the end. Now take a look at this Orbea Occam and put your new skills to the test. Now the Orbea Occam and the Rallon are often referred to as four bar single pivots. And that is, well, basically because there are four bars effectively, but check out that main pivot point connected directly to that rear axle. That is definitely a single pivot, but the added linkages that attach the shock make it a linkage driven single pivot. What's interesting about the Orbea Rallon and indeed the Orbea Occam is that they have a pivot directly at the rear axle. Now, this is very similar to a split pivot, although we can't call it a split pivot because that is actually a branded name and a suspension design patented by Dave Weigel. It's also very similar to Trek's ABP suspension design. Now, all of these designs are still linkage driven single pivots, but the reason they split and at the axle is to minimize the effects that braking has on the bike suspension. So with a typical single pivot, if the braking forces are effectively attached to the lower chainstay, it can cause big movements and therefore braking forces really affect the suspension. However, if there is a pivot in the rear axle or indeed on the upper rear seat stays, then that minimizes the movement or the the effect that braking has on that suspension design. Dual link or twin link suspension layouts have a solid rear triangle or swing arm that is mounted to the frame by two rocker links. The shock can be driven by the swing arm or by one of the rockers or even by both of the rocker links. This is a very famous design that comes in many branded and patented forms. So for example, Giant's Maestro suspension, the DW Link used on Pivot and Ibis, the DW6 used on Atherton bikes, the VPP or Virtual Pivot Point used by Santa Cruz and sometimes Intense, and Propane's P10 suspension. So let's look at the Propane's P10 suspension. Now the shock is driven by both the rocker links and the top one will have a slight anti-clockwise rotational movement and the bottom one has a slight clockwise rotational movement. 
But on something like a DW link, as used by Pivot and IBIS, for example, those links actually both move clockwise. So they are slightly different to uh, Propane's P10, even though they are both twin links. And these tiny little complexities are why we have so many different branded names for this same suspension style. Having two links that move independently of each other means that the point at which the suspension is pivoting around may not actually be where the physical main pivot is. We refer to this as a floating or a virtual pivot point. If the main pivot point changes throughout the suspension's travel, then the characteristics will change throughout the travel too, meaning anti-squat and anti-rise levels could be optimized at different points in the bike's travel to better suit the bike's needs. Horse link bikes are easily identified as they have a pivot on the chainstay near the rear axle, meaning the rear axle is effectively mounted to the seat stay. This often forms a four-sided suspension aesthetic, which is why it's often referred to as four bar, because it simply has four bars. Now, as I mentioned earlier, an Orbea Rallon and an Orbea Occam are often referred to as four bar single pivots. And in fact, you can get a four bar twin link as well. But that doesn't mean that either of these suspension designs are technically a four bar layout. The proper technical term for a true four bar is the horse link and anything else that simply looks similar and has four bars is actually a faux bar, which means it's a fake four bar. Now the horse link was made famous by Specialized with their FSR suspension many moons ago, but actually the patent ran out and a lot of other companies jumped on this design. So you may see them used a lot by companies such as Canyon, who actually uses it for most of their rear suspension designs like the Torque, the Spectral and the Neuron. So with the horse link having a pivot on the chainstay, that means that the rear axle is not directly attached to the main pivot and therefore the main pivot is not consistent. Uh, much like the twin link there will be a virtual pivot point that the rear axle moves around and like the twin pivot that means that suspension designers can effectively tune braking forces and pedaling forces that affects the suspension. <laughs> You may have noticed that there's five sections to this video, even though I've said there's only four main suspension designs. And that's because this is a bit of a bonus section because high pivot isn't technically a suspension design as such. You can have a high pivot single pivot. You can have a high pivot horse link. Uh, so the high pivot is just a variation on these suspension designs. However, raising that main pivot and making it higher does change the characteristics of those different designs. So let's explain what a high pivot really is. A high pivot simply means the main pivot point is higher than the rear axle. The suspension can still be a single pivot or a horse link, for example, but we focus in on the high pivot bit because this changes how the rear axle moves on the bike. As the bike sinks down into its suspension, the front of the bike and the rear axle move away from each other. In reality, this means the rear axle has a rearward movement. Now the benefits of a rearward axle path is that it promises to deliver a magic carpet feel as that back wheel moves away from big hits on technical terrain. The problem with this is that as the bike sinks into its travel and the bike grows in length, that would put tension on the chain. And this gives undesirable characteristics like firming up the suspension or pedal kickback. 
This is why later designs started to come with that high pivot idler. And this jockey wheel or pulley wheel, as it's often referred to, will pick up the slack of a longer chain and allow that bike to grow without putting the added effects of the chain tension back on the bike. The clever thing about the idler pulley wheel is that suspension designers can actually move it around and change the tension of the chain on that rear suspension. And that can effectively tune out things like pedaling or braking forces. So there we have it. There are a lot of subtle changes to rear suspension designs that give them subtle changes. And whether you would notice them or not is perhaps another matter. But hopefully I've given you the confidence to identify these main layouts on a future or prospective bike that you're looking at. Uh, whether you would be able to analyze how that bike rides or not is also another matter. There's only one way to find out and that's to go out and ride it. But anyway, let me know what you think of this video and if there is a favorite suspension design that you have let me know down in the comments below um, and maybe have a look at your own bikes and see if you can identify one of those four main suspension designs thanks for watching